Johnny, we get it. God is big and he wants to do something big with our life. And you've got a theory, Mr. Millennial, mm -hmm. that we should put ourselves through stress. Like I might lift weights, you know, five pounds this week, 10 pounds next week. You want to see us put ourselves through increasingly bigger levels of stress just out of practice. What does this look like? Yeah, well, I think that when you, um, when you rise in an organization and you stop taking orders and you start giving them, that uh, it's very, very easy to coast and to not put yourself in challenging situations. And, and I think we have to constantly keep pressuring ourselves and keep pushing ourselves into challenging situations for the sake of putting ourselves in a challenging situation, which is the exact opposite, I think, of, of a lot of our mentality. It's we've worked this hard so we can get to this place, but perhaps that isn't, that isn't a ceiling, that's a stepping stone, right? And then on the other side of it, I think that the stress that naturally comes with life is a gift. You know, th those four areas, heart, soul, mind, and strength, we, we experience no more stress than we do in those four areas, right? I mean, the balance, I, mean I have a two-year-old and a seven-month-old, right? I mean, this is an extremely crazy, crazy time so of our life. Maybe pull a few all-nighters and then go speak for convene and that kind of, that yeah, kind of stress. Yeah, and write a book in two months. And I mean, it's like crazy, our, our life right now. But what I'm learning is, is that this stress of this season um, is a gift of God to us. It's not easy, but it's like growth in hyperdrive. What about renewal? What do you do for renewal? What does a millennial do for renewal? I don't know the answer to that. Um, you know, I, <laughs> God gave us this Sabbath thing before the New Testament, right? Maybe before Abraham and everything else. And I, I think it's right. You know, I, I think it's, you know, I, I think um, if Jesus went alone to pray, right? And Jesus made the whole world. Now, you know, the Bible says he made a star. Yeah, the Bible doesn't say this. The Bible says he made the whole world. But what we know is there's a star out there that's 250 million miles in diameter. Jesus made that, right? Why is Jesus wasting his time resting? He didn't have to rest. But what did he do? He, he gave us a model. And I, I think that, you know, I think all of us know this. Like, you know, we know the things that drag us and we know the things that refresh us. And, you know, and, and it, you know, we know what we need to do. We just don't do them. Right, but and and it takes it, it, it takes you know hard decisions. You know, I, I I right now I was just talking you know to my friend Peter. You know, I, I have an I'm working really really hard on saving Christians in Iraq and Syria. We've saved a hundred thousand Christians since it's December, incredible. right? I mean, it's we incredible. really really the working on the cradle fund. We're going to talk about fund. that in a bit. Yeah, and I have an opportunity for a, you know a meeting in London on May fourth that could really really make a difference. But I've been traveling too much, and I'm going to say no to that, you know, because so, I need to be there with my family. And it's a really, really difficult, difficult decision. But you know what? This is God's universe. It's not mine. And, and how arrogant of me to think that, you know, not taking a meeting is going to, you know, affect anything that God's planning on doing. You know, it's just a way of God putting me back in my place. You do have quite an incredible day job. I want us all to take a look. You brought us a preview of Sunday night of AD, this series, how, how well is it doing in the ratings? It was number one the first yeah, week, it's, second it's, week. It's doing really, really well. So it's, it's winning its, its uh, demographic, and, you know, it's, I mean, this is NBC. <laughs> okay. We're, we're putting the book of Acts, the story of the birth of the church on NBC. You know, Mark Burnett and Roma Downey are the, you know, the, the prophets of our time. They're the loudest preachers. They have the largest church in America. It's called, like, 10 million people every Sunday night on NBC. On ABC. Yeah, watch, watch this, everyone. This is this from is this preview. coming Sunday night's episode. Watch this. Are you Peter? Please come. My daughter's sick. If you are willing, bring her back, please. It'll be God's will. Not mine. Jesus Christ, be healed. Child, hear me. I walked with him, ate with him, called him my friend. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. Prophets of our time. So another 39 minutes of that Sunday night. <laughs> it, I've been watching every Sunday. It's an amazing series. What, what do you think God is doing? And first giving right. us AD, the Bible. 100 million people watched it. And now this. Now this is like, I, I believe this is the most, yeah, of course I will believe this as young, but you know, I, believe, I believe this is the most important moment in Christian history since Jesus, okay? And here's why I believe it. This is the first time we can see the completion of the Great Commission. The first time. It's the first time in Christian history where we not only know where everyone is that has never heard of Jesus, but we know how to get it to them, right? Through media, you mean? Through media, yeah, through media. I mean, th this, is, this is a really, really unique moment. And, and, and I, I believe, like, what we're seeing in the, you know, if I take off, if I put back my ha pastor hat on, you know, as, as I was at Liberty for so long, like, you know, the enemy is overplaying his hand in the, in the Middle East. But what's happening in the Middle East right now is we're seeing first century Christianity being rebirthed in the 21st century. And when, when I was in Iraq in October talking to these pastors and these leaders, they said things to me like, Jesus is requiring us to take up our cross. They weren't complaining about Jesus requiring them to take up their cross. I mean, this is like first century. You saw it. You probably didn't see it. You probably didn't watch it. And I, you know, I'm glad you didn't watch it. But because I'm you know, becoming a specialist in this space, I watched um, the, most of the video, the beheading of the 30. I didn't watch the actual beheadings. But I listened to the words that the guy said as he was beheading the Coptic Christians. By the way, speaking in a almost perfect, perfect English, probably an American accent, maybe a Canadian accent. It was, it was North American. And he says, what's up with these Christians, essentially? Like, we're, we're trying to help these people. You know, it, it, he, we try, we're giving them the opportunity to convert to Jesus, uh, to convert to Islam. We're, we're trying, we, we, they won't convert, and then they won't pay the tax. But Johnny, they won't you, deny Jesus. you have said that we aren't even willing to live for what they are willing to die for. So connect the dots now to AD, the Bible. What's God? Yeah, what well, see, thinks? when you watch this Sunday night's episode, this Sunday night, the persecution really, really breaks out. Right? In, the in, in AD, in yeah. the book of Acts. And it's going to continue. It's going to get worse and worse, worse and worse and worse. And what you're going to see in AD is exactly what we're seeing in the 21st century in Iraq and Syria. We're seeing people for their faith alone being beheaded like Paul was, being crucified like Peter was. Sawn in two. Sawn in two. We're, we're, we're watching all of these things happen in our modern world. And I think in God's big sovereign picture, I don't know how it all works together, but I, but I think God works in really, really strange and mysterious ways still. And, and we're, we're seeing the early church in the middle of this real-life situation in the Middle East, while, we're, while the story of the early church is being told on NBC you know, because of the work of, of Mark Burnett and Roma Downey, it is a really, really interesting time to be alive. You know, and, and by the way, I think it's stewardship. As soon as I found out, and I'm sorry, maybe I've, I, I've you know, robbed you of your, uh, of your ignorance, now you'll be in the same situation I am, but, but as soon as I found out the situation was happening in, in Iraq and Syria, I had to do something because I believe knowledge is a responsibility. You hopped on a plane, and this is millennial style. You hopped on a plane. You went to see it in October. You heard the testimonies firsthand. I had the privilege of reading your book. It's not even released yet in Canada, but, but uh, your folks gave me the galleys. By page 30, I was weeping. I had to put it down. You wrote it immediately. You wrote, I don't know, what did that take you, two weeks to write that book? It's just, yeah. you just burnt right through it. What can we do, John? What can we do? Well, you see, this is not the time for like, us to be kind of sitting around twiddling our thumbs. Yeah, that's my point. Like, we're more important than we think we are. Yeah, you created you know, the Cradle Fund. Yeah, yeah. It, it, can we get involved? Yeah, of course yeah. you can. You cradlefund.org, and you can, you can give, but I, you know, give to whatever organization is working, working in the region. But with what's happening in this world we're living in, like, we, you have no idea 
uh, what role you can play, you know, in, in this. And I just think we need to all be, all be involved. You know, here's the thing, like, you know, with the persecution of Christians, I, I sat in a meeting in Jordan a full year before this situation started happening with ISIS. Full year before ISIS existed. You know, they've existed since, they've existed for 10 years. Isn't that shocking? They've been around for 10 years. The very leader of ISIS, Baghdadi, took charge of the organization in May of 2010. He's, he attacked a church in October of 2010. But if you pay attention to the government and everybody else, they think these people just came from nowhere. They didn't come from nowhere. But that said, a year before ISIS swept across northern Iraq and took Mosul, which is an ancient Christian city, and Karakosh, another ancient Christian city, all these things happened. I sat in a meeting in Jordan with three Catholic cardinals, five Orthodox patriarchs, representatives from the church in Lebanon, Egypt, Syria, Iraq, and they all were predicting this was coming, and the world didn't pay attention. And now we can't not know it's happening. Right? We've seen it over and over and over again. And you can rest assured like they would do it to us if they had the opportunity to. And these are our brothers and sisters in Christ. And we need to pray for them the way we hope someone would pray for us. And we need to rescue them the way we hope someone would rescue us. And we need to, we need to like, have their back the way we hope someone would have our back. You know, and, that, and that's why I'm talking about like, the integration of meaning in, in our vocation. Because uh, there is some brain trust in this room that God, God is... God needs to pull out of you and give us a donation to this crisis. You know, nobody right now has a plan for the Middle East, right? And you've made a good point in your book, Defying ISIS, how incredibly complex it is. But the idea of actually getting, you know, food, homes, shelter, care, education back into the Middle East, it needs a monetary engine behind it. Yeah, you, well, you for need, now it's going to be donations. Yeah, well, you need three uh, three things need to happen. Uh, number one, rescue. Number two, restore. And number three, return. Like we have to provide immediate rescue you know, for these people, and this is the worst humanitarian crisis of our modern era. That's what UN says. Number two, restoration. We need to rebuild these communities, right? And that that involves everything. The, the trauma of you know ISIS has uh, ki they've kidnapped uh, one one day they kidnapped five thousand Yazidi women. I have on my phone. An email from a, a from a former intelligence person, you know, in the Middle East. It's the price list of the slave market, and and the the, the slaves are car categorized by age and by religion. And a, a zero to a one to nine year old Christian girl, Christian girl, one to nine years old. Johnny, when can we start getting uh, defying ISIS in in the states here? No, it's it's out now. It's yeah. out now. Yeah. They can start reading it. I really encourage you to read it. I'm going to um, do a big turn here, but I want to get back to stress because you saw it in Iraq. You've put yourself through it to live this kind of selfless, cutting-edge life. I happened to be on the other end of the door when Mark Burnett was doing a production meeting. It is not pretty. <laughs> he has got enormous standards for excellence, for huge results. How are you adjusting to that? Yeah, I mean... You, you, I mean, I came from higher education into Hollywood. I, I knew nothing about television or you know any, any of that stuff. But but you know, I I, I believe that um, uh, that sort of skill sets are transferable if you're teachable. And you know, so I I decided I was going to learn it. And you know, I I I'll tell you about Mark Burnett. Mark Burnett is the best in the world at what he does. You know, and he just doesn't take. Um, he just has a high level of excellence, which goes directly to his faith. And his you know, he, wife is an enormous gift to him. No, they both are. I mean, they're, they're two in, amazing, yeah. amazing people, she's and they're committed uh, to Jesus Christ. She's opposite temperament and communication style as could possibly be. Yeah, that's right. And, and then and they complement. They work together, and they love Jesus Christ, and they're taking their influence, and they're using it for the glory of God. I mean, they, they uh, sort of the quintessential example of, of, of you know, people occupying a secular space for the glory of God. And, you know, and, they're, and they don't hide their faith at all. They're overt about their faith, and it hasn't hurt them one bit, has it? I mean, they, you know, they, they've just, you know, what Hollywood was looking for, and you know, several people in this room know this better than I, but they're not discriminatory against Christians. You know, they just don't support things that aren't successful. <laughs> okay. You know, and, it, and, and the fact is, is that we, we have a reputation for not doing things well when it comes to the intersection of media and, and Christianity. And Mark and Roma did it excellently. And now there's an amazing, they opened the floodgates for other people to be involved. And they took a great financial risk and they have been financially rewarded. And they've been rewarded in having you on staff as their chief of staff. Everyone, Johnny Moore, thank him very much.